thank you for joining us for our sixth and final chapter on the subject sexuality in the black church a womanist perspective by reverend dr kelly brown douglas chapter six is entitled a sexual discourse of resistance in the black church what are the possibilities for sexual discourse of resistance in the black church can a church community according to douglas move from regarding sexuality as a taboo issue to engage in, in frank discussion about it is such a quantum change in attitudes even possible how is the black church to address black sexuality without alienating its members moreover what are the implications of a sexual discourse of resistance of the church's activity how can a sexual discourse of resistance be transforming appreciating that advocating and in engaging in sexual discourse are easier said than done this chapter offers creative suggestions on how black churches can begin to provide an atmosphere conducive to engaging in sexual discourse of re resistance. After suggesting ways to foster sexual discourse of resistance, this chapter will conclude by clarifying how the church is called to act in matters of sexuality. As a essential first step toward a comprehensive treatment of black sexuality by the black church is to reestablish the unity of the sacred in the secular realms. Many black churches have already laid the groundwork for this by self-consciously attempting to affirm and reclaim their African heritage. In so doing, black churches have integrated African symbols, rituals, chants, and dress into weekly worship. Yet this assertion and recovery of African roots typically ignores an essential part of African reality, that is the sacredness of the secular reality. General denunciation, secular reality, whether through damning exhortations or by making sure that it does not invade the church belly the authenticity of an appreciation for one's african heritage can that be said often enough uh, that african worldviews tend to not make a distinction between the sacred and the secular realities they don't make african ancestors didn't make a distinction between the sacred and the secular the very notion of sec secularity has no place in many african cultures all that is of the world is of god according to our ancestors all that is of the world is of God. 
Our ancestors saw no distinction between the secular and the sacred. Every aspect of life presents an opportunity for the manifestation of the divine presence. According to many African traditions, there is a unity to life. Dualistic splits between the soul and the body, heaven and earth, divine and flesh are non-existent. No doubt because of their belief in the inherent unity between the sacred and the secular. Enslaved Africans were able to grasp the radicality of God's disclosure in Jesus Christ, that the divine could wrap himself in human flesh. Our ancestors could grasp that because they didn't put a distinction between the sacred and the secular as we do today. Integral to reclaiming and affirming an African religious heritage, as well as to being conscious stewards of the black faith tradition. Black churches are obligated or obliged to restore the unity of sacred and the secular realms. Uh, to view the sacred and secular as one dimension of living provides an atmosphere reassessing the sanctity of human sexuality. It also suggests that we are traditionally considered secular resources, may be used within the black church to foster discourse on sexuality. Let me repeat that again. It is suggested that we, that what are traditionally considered secular resources may be used within the black church to foster a discourse on sexuality. Sexuality is perhaps an inevitable theme of black women's literature, given the role played in the overall oppression black people by the exploitation of black female sexuality and given the <clears throat> and given the centrality of black women to the life struggle of black families as well as black families communities perhaps perhaps uh, there is no better novel of penetrating black sexuality than Alice Walker's much discussed work. Some have called it a womanist novel, The Color Purple. Through the letter writing of Seeley, the main character Walker in, ingeniously reveals how white hegemony, 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 what did we say that word meant? Hegemony is a political, economic, and military predominance of one state over others. So it is a political, economic, or military predominance over one state or other. with white hedge money has imposed upon the lives of black people and set into motion a cycle of pathological and paristic sexuality. Seely, a victim of sexual abuse at the hands of her father and husband, both of whom are acting out of a distorted sense of masculinity has low self-esteem, a warped perspective on sex, dysfunctional relationships with women, and a severe relationship, a severed relationship with God. It is not until she develop, develops a mutual and intimate sexual, but not simply genital 
relationship with her female friend, Shug Avery, it silly begins her journey towards wholeness. With Shug's guidance and counsel, Celie confronts her past, separating fact from lie, and is subsequently and pain, painstakingly resorted to a healthy sexuality. In being able to celebrate her sexuality, Celie rediscovers herself reconnects with her sister, reestablishes community, and re-envisions God. Given the depth of white sexual exploitation of Black lives, it is not surprising that numerous other novels tell the story of Black people's experience of creatively unraveling, unraveling the sexual politics of Black of the black community. In an effort to establish a non-intimidating environment for engaging in sexual discourse, black churches might institute regular book discussion groups. The discussions of selective black novels such as Beloved or The Color Purple, black church people would be impelled towards undertaking sexual discourse, the discussion of the realities of black sexuality, including male-female relationships, self-esteem, and sexual intimacy would be most unavoidable. Most significantly, these novels would assist persons in recognizing the interconnections between black sexuality and white racism, as well as how distortions of black sexuality have impacted black intimacy as well as relationships. Such a program of regular study would not only advance critical sexual discourse, but also foster literacy in terms of black literature. In addition to engaging black literature and anticipation for the sanctity of secular reality, would also allow the black church to get in touch with black hip hop culture, just as literature has engaged black sexuality, so too has black popular culture even if it has most often done so in a manner contrary to black life as well as black wholeness. For instance, as noted earlier, many have recognized the obsession with sex that seems to be a part of the hip hop culture of black youth, movies, songs, and Gangster rap are replete with tales of sexual promiscuity, mis misogenian misogenism, gay bashing, and perverted views of masculinity. We cannot avoid noting that the popular culture, black youth, reveals a side of black sexuality. Typically, popular culture also offers a portrait of Black spirituality as movies or song lyrics. Variously, variously seek, variously speak of God. The music, the movies, the literature of this culture are an entreat for discussing Black sexuality. Various elements of this culture can be valuable tools for examining the messages about sex, intimate relationships and masculinity and femininity that black youth receive as well as for exploring the impetus between the messages. 
finally to appreciate what is traditionally considered secular is not to ignore the sacred none of these proposed activities book study movie music nights should take the place of what is typically the center of any black church program and that is bible study but again bible study must be approached in such a way that a creative engagement in sexual discourse can occur this means that bible study should provide an opportunity for personal inspiration and serious reflection on on complex issues such such as sexuality to achieve this the work of black biblical scholars should become integral to church bible studies yet many of these scholars have painstakingly tried to explore biblical texts in light of the black experience and in a manner that is respectful and affirming of black biblical tradition in addition as preaching has been the centerpiece of the black church tradition teaching must also become central this means that as churches regularly spend thousands of dollars to engage the services of the country's top preachers they too must be willing to spend money to engage black scholars and theologians theological education week must become an essential to black church programming as our spirit as our spring revival weeks too often black churches are willing to spend money for preachers but not for scholars they must be committed to pay for both just as black religious scholars are accountable to their black church communities so must black churches be responsible to these black scholars this means that black church leader must institutionalize regular dialogue between the black church and the black academy again such a dialogue will be an inevitable and fostering possibility for exploring black sexuality the change in attitude towards sexuality within the black church and the wider community must begin not at the top with black church leadership or theologians but at the bottom with the people who sit in the pews most particular a new black perspective on sexuality must begin with those who constitute over 70 percent of black church congregations which are black women to be a womanist theologian is to enable black women to love themselves regardless as a womanist theologians we must be ever resolute and our task of empowering uh, the black woman who sat in the pews to be able ver fervently to affirm and love every aspect of their embodied selves. To love oneself is to be able to love others as well as God. Secondly, if black women are to be able to affirm the fullness of their sexuality then they must claim that power within themselves that urges them towards life as well as wholeness while while a white culture might bear the burden of manipulating black sexuality and even black people's response to their own sexuality black people are in the end responsible for their actions sexual discourse of resistance signals that it's time for a change 
It demands a transformation in the way the black church community, especially its leaders, has conducted itself in terms of women and gay and lesbian persons. For, for far too long, the black church has gotten away with behaviors to simply malign and pervert the humanity of others. It has too often frustrated the expression of a healthy life enhancing sexuality for many members of the black community. For example, the homophobia of the black church is often as ven venomous as that expressed in some gangster rap most disturbing however is that the black church has the power to impose its homophobic beliefs upon others thus affecting the way people live their their lives and to be sure homophobia has been the basis for the black church's negligence response to the HIV AIDS crisis. The sexual discourse of resistance makes clear that there is no longer an excuse for the black church behavior, behaving in such a way that compromises the humanity or marks the sexuality of any individual. It is time for, for transformation. Such a transformation begins with the black church community becoming loud advocates for those who are marginalized, outcast, or oppressed in society because of who they are, the ministry of Jesus, the incarnate one, clarifies that sinners are those who foster racism sexism and homophobia and those who nurture racist, sexist, heterosexist structures and systems. For the church to be homophobic and heterosexist is for the church to be antichrist. James Cone once said that whiteness is whiteness as it symbolized racism was of the antichrist cone was right because that which would distort malign or interfere with the humanity of another is the very antithesis of who jesus was as the perfect revelation of god such is the case with homophobia. This is the very antithesis of God's disclosure in Jesus. This also means that we who call ourselves Christians, we who call ourselves Christians, are constrained to denounce and to tear down those interlocking structures and systems of races sexes and classes oppressions that grant privilege to those who may be of the right color the right gender and express their sexuality in an acceptable way well, the black church is not to duplicate such an interlocking system of oppression by establishing its own hierarchy of privilege and power to date, it has done just this in its attempts to exclude women and gay and lesbian persons from the places of power within the institution. Fears notwithstanding, it is no doubt the black church's attitude towards, mm, towards homosexuality that has hindered its response. The sexual discourse of resistance in highlighting the sin of homophobia 
stresses that sin is an activity that frustrates black life. The black church must move toward a ministry that is more responsive to the complex issues of black living. Such a ministry is not based upon the charismatic personality of one individual. Instead, it empowers the community it serves to actively participate, sharing their skills in a ministry of life and wholeness for black men as well as black women. Finally, if the black church community really believes in the justice of God and the inherent worth of all individuals, then this community must hold its leaders accountable for their misconduct. If black men and women are ever to come to a healthy appreciation of their own sexuality, then black church leaders must not be permitted to mock the sexuality of others. There is a life defining brokenness in the black community. Black women and men, girls and boys are losing the battle for self-love. Mm. Intimate relationships are between men and women are dangerously strained. The time has come for black church people to understand the profound meaning of this choice in relation to who they are as sexual beings. To choose Jesus as the center of one's life and faith is to choose one whose very being and way of being in the world compelled an appreciation for the sanctity of human sexuality. Thus, to render sexuality a taboo issue is, in effect, to preclude the possibility of knowing the full measure of God's intimate presence and activity in human history. It's virtually to close oneself off from the very God who hears, knows, and walks with Black people in their struggles for life and wholeness. Only when the veil of silence surrounding black sexuality is lifted will black men and women be able to realize the deliberating significance of what it means for the God of Jesus Christ to have chosen them. Finally, the Great Commission makes the need for redeeming the sacredness of sexuality clear. It resolves, you shall love your you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Such a resolution is a call to radical wholeness. It summons women and men to wholly love their spiritual and embodied selves so that they can wholly love their God. Only when the taboo of sexuality is discarded will black women and men be free to experience what it means to wholly love and be loved by the God that became flesh in Jesus Christ. I want to thank everyone who has followed us and been a part of this study these past six weeks. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do. Reverend Anthony E. Owens Ministries, LLC. Please like this video. Please go back and look at the other previous videos on this topic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for chatting with us during the time this video aired on Reverend Reverend Anthony Owens Ministries, LLC. God bless you.
may God keep you and may heaven continue to smile upon you and give you this peace. God bless.